Hey everyone, we have a special giveaway for you from August 14th through the 20th. The Women's Cup featuring Racing Louisville and OO Rain will be broadcast on Paramount Plus, and we want you to watch. So we're giving away a $100 Paramount gift card to one lucky winner. To enter, you got to like this video, subscribe to Attacking Third YouTube, and leave a comment on the video with your social media handle, and you'll be entered to win a $100 Paramount Plus gift card. Subscribe, like, and comment, and enjoy the episode. Hello and welcome to Attacking Third, a CBS Sports soccer podcast. I'm Sandra Herrera, lead NWSL writer for CBS Sports. Joined today, as always, by my colleague and co-host, Lisa Roman, broadcaster and analyst for CBS Sports. On today's episode, we have a special special guest interview today. Uh, before we get into all that, quick reminder to subscribe to us on YouTube for exclusive interviews and content and whenever we go live at youtube.com slash attacking third. Our special guest interview today is the rookie for Racing Louisville, number two draft pick in the 2022 NWSL draft, Jalen Howell. Welcome to the show. Thanks, guys. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. We're absolutely amped to have you on here. We were chatting a little bit off mic, and we were talking about how, like, we spoke with Savannah DeMello not too long ago. Uh, we've had Lauren Millay on the show uh, ahead of preseason, uh, talking all things Racing Louisville. And we're just apparently all about getting as many racing Louisville players as possible on attacking third. So let's start off with that. Let's start off with all things racing. How are you? How has, um, we're deep, we're deep into the NWSL regular season now. Um, how, how's the rookie year been going for you? Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> I think the transition from, you know, college to pro is, is huge. Um, I've learned a lot and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm grateful for the experience, but, you know, racing, I think has done a great job making that transition as easy as possible, but, um, still, you know, in terms of style of play and speed of play and the physicality of the game, it changes a lot. And so I think, you know, adjusting to that and adjusting to lifestyle has been something I've been able, um, to kind of get used to at this point, but it did take a while, but, you know, we're deep in the season. Um, obviously we're pretty frustrated with the results. Um, a lot of ties, uh, you know, and we want to be able to win, um, consistently. And I think, you know, we have a squad to do it. It's just, we have a lot of young players. We're trying to tie it all together. And, um, you know, I think eventually we'll be able to do that. We're on the right track and, um, I'm excited for the future. Jalen, you just touched on it, the transition from uh, just being a student athlete in college to then being a professional, whether it's off the pitch, adjusting to the speed, the transition of the play. What has been the biggest surprise for you in this first year for you, whether it's on the pitch, off the pitch, being a professional, the league, anything? Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's definitely... um on the pitch at Florida state, they did a great job preparing us, you know, the professional mindset and stuff like that off the pitch and marker coin did a great job with that. But, um, I think on the field, man, we like it's, it's fast and it's intense and it's physical and it's running and it's a lot of running and just transition back for that. And honestly, I was, I wasn't really prepared for that. And I thought I was fit in college. And then I got here and I was like, it's a whole nother fitness level. And, um, you know, to keep up with, with world-class players and, you know, make an impact on, on the field. Um, it's a lot, it's a lot different. It's a lot harder. Um, so I think, you know, it's been great because it's been pushing me and, you know, being pushed and being better every day, every game. And, um, that's what I love about it. And so it's been, it's been super fun too, just being able to learn and grow that way. And, you know, through that transition, I love that you talked about that because so many players talk about how quick this game is. Everyone says it's a transitional league, but anyone that's listening to this podcast or watching this interview, if you have not been to an NWSL game in person, you've got to get there because it is 10 times faster than watching it on a screen and screen. And Jalen just said that, that it's so fast, all the running you do, how, how do you, how do you prepare yourself for all that? Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, that's another thing is it's, it's a full-time job. You know, you leave the facility, you're constantly, how am I recovering physically and mentally um, for training the next day for games? You know, there's a lot of games too throughout the season. So I think it's um, keeping yourself fit, but also managing yourself and, you know, learning 
how to do that with your body over such a long season, you know, cause the college season, um, you know, we start in August and December if you go all the way through, but this is such a, a long season and there's so many games. So I think for me, it was important to learn how to manage my body um, on and off the field and recovery is, is so important. So I think preparing for each game um, is something that I've really, you know, also had to learn just because it is so much more uh, volume and intensity and the amount of time we play um, through the year. So I think that's something also that I've really had to to learn and understand is how to manage my body off the field and kind of get into a routine and how to take care of all of those little things, you know, that all these world-class players have mastered why they're, you know, so great for so long in this league. You know, it's so wild to kind of hear you speak about the transition a little bit because it wasn't too long ago. I, I'm like remembering another like Florida state Seminole, like we had Carson Pickett on and she kind of echoed something similarly. And this is like a veteran of the league at this point, someone who's been playing in NWSL for a while and straight up said like, nothing will prepare you for the level of play. When you get here, you can go to one of the best collegiate programs in the country. And then you get here and you're like, Oh my God, I need to catch up quickly. So I want to stick with that energy for a little bit as we kind of continue talking about NWSL regular season for another second. There's, we're counting, we're counting down the weeks here at at this point. Um, Second half of the season kicked in into full gear this summer. And for a lot of clubs out there, there's anywhere from, you know, seven weeks remaining, eight weeks remaining, nine weeks, depending, depending on the club. And for racing, um, you're in a very sort of a, a, a place in the table where maybe there's a lot more opportunity ahead of you all. So we've been watching racing kind of perform over the course of this season. And like you mentioned, there's been a lot of draws for, for this team, maybe kind of in a sense, trying to to still keep ground in the standings while also perhaps almost playing spoiler a little bit against <clears throat> uh, some other teams who think they could just come out here and, and pick up the points. Mm-hmm. So for you, as you've been navigating this season, what's what's been one of the positive things that you've learned about your team during this time? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, like I said, we're, we're a super young group, but I think we have great leadership too. Um, you know, some of the older players and Nadia and Jess and Gemma, like, you know, the older players, I think, are doing a good job at leading like such a young group. And so I think, you know, that's one positive thing. And over the course of the year, we've gotten so much better. You look at our first games, the you know, the most recent, and I think we've had great performances. And honestly, a little bit is is luck, and a little bit is just working on, you know, finishing. And um, that has to a lot of it is experience. And I think you know, once the majority of our group has gotten a little more experience under our belt, we'll we'll be flying around. Um, so I'm I'm excited to see that. But I think the positive thing is is most games, you know. Um, majority of them, I think our performance has been pretty good. And now it's just finishing the game and, you know, coming out with those three points instead of just the one. Um, but like I said, I think we have a great staff and um, support and leadership on the team to be able to continue to grow to do that. It is your first year uh, as a rookie and, and racing level does have an incredibly young team, but nearly two thirds of the season has, has been completed uh, thus far. So when you look at besides being a young team um, and, and maybe it is the finishing the game and kind of closing that out, but what's the hardest part for racing Louisville or something as a team that you're constantly uh, reminding each other about or, or focused on as a unit? Yeah, I, I, for sure. I think, um, you know, it's finishing the whole game, playing well the whole game. Uh, I think, you know, for a lot of the game, we'll play really well. And then, you know, we lose our concentration for 10, 15 minutes and a team scores. And then we're digging our way back, um, whether, you know, it's beginning of the game or end of the game. So I think it's just holding our concentration through the full 90 minutes and being able to come out with those three points, like I said, instead of, um, you know, performing well for 30 minutes, dropping off for 10, perform well for five. It's, it's kind of an up and down when we perform well, like I said, we're, we're performing very well, but I think it's just the consistency part right now for us um, and holding that and playing well for a full 90 minutes. It was really cool to hear you speak about that a little bit in terms of this season and this point where it's at right now, sort of hearing you talk a little bit collectively about the team, which is, you know, the questions we've been asking you, but maybe just sh- shifting to yourself personally, um, as you're navigating your career now as a pro 
athlete. What's something that you're maybe focusing on personally to try to get better at or improve upon each day? Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, there's, there's several aspects. And like I said, I think this league does a great job at exposing, you know, what you need to work on. And like I said, I, I love that it's pushing me and helping me grow. Um, I think, you know, like I said, the speed of play, like the, it's so fast and, um, you know, I, I'd love to continue to build on that. And uh, like I said, like just learning even just by playing in those games and how fast it is. Um, I love it. I want to continue to grow in doing that. Um, you know, best players in the world play the fastest. So, um, you know, that and also I think a huge part for me is, you know, the the mental side of it. Um, it's a long season, like we were talking about. There's a lot of ups and downs, um, you know, as a team and individually. So I think importance of, um, you know, keeping your head and being able to manage that. And uh, also, you know, think of it, you know, it's, it's not my identity, you know, who I am, how I play. That's not my identity. Um, you know, I think it's easy to think that sometimes because it is a job. It's so intense. It's your whole life every day. Um, but, you know, I, I, it's uh, getting back to the basics and having fun and going out there and, and playing. Um, so I think there's a lot of lessons, you know, to be learned on the mental side, too. And also, you know, that I want to keep growing at as well. Racing Louisville has played every single team so far in the NWSL, some teams already twice at this point in the season. So when you look back at all of the games, um, the opponents, the venues, the individual player competition, uh, what game comes to mind as uh, the most challenging or maybe one that you were most excited or, or the team was really hype about? Which team or which game do you think about uh, when you look back at this season? Um, man, there's a lot of them. Cause honestly, every team in this league is good and you have to be hyped for every game because, uh, if you come out flat, you know, you're going to pay for it. Um, I think, you know, we, we had a lot of fun in Daytona. I think that was awesome. It was a cool experience on that racetrack. I think, yeah. you know, practicing the day before that game, you could just feel the energy in the group and how excited everybody is and how special and unique of an opportunity that is. Um, so, you know, we, we really love that, but honestly, like we talk about all the time, like how much we love, everybody loves to play at home, but you know, our fans are, are amazing. Our stadium's great. Our pitch is great. Like we just love playing in front of our home crowd. And so every time we get to do that, I think it's also a different energy for us. Did you get love to it. see Chance the Rapper when you guys were playing in Daytona? <laughs> oh yeah. It was a little bit of a distraction because I was right before the game and he was like right by our field. And I was out there like getting into it before the game, but maybe it was a little bit of a good pump up, but yeah, it was awesome. Like redef redefining, like the, the concept of like the pump up playlist, <laughs> like just yeah. go to a concert, quite frankly, before. just have the concert right next to the game. Yeah. That's <laughs> it's perfect. not distracting at all. <laughs> no. No. We were warming up and chances in the background. I'm like, you know what? This is cool. But also like It'd be cool to be at that concert too. So let's yeah. have it at separate times maybe, but. <laughs> I love that. I love that so much. That's a, let's shift gears a, a little bit. I'd like to chat with you a little bit about uh, women's national team. Um, you're someone who's been involved with, with the national team program starting from youth level and, and you've seen and spent some time at the senior level uh, coming. The, the team's coming off of a pretty incredible run during the CONCACAF W championship. And this went right alongside the regular season where the, the league didn't necessarily take a, a full type of, of break during this time. So were you able to maybe take in some of the games of this competition? And if you were, what did, what did, you, what did you think of the team's uh, performance during the, uh, the competition? Yeah, of course. Yeah, um, I was able to, you know, watch all of them. And, you know, with Foxy and a lot of my friends and the girls playing on the team, um, you know, it's... Uh, it was important for me to watch and support them. And, um, you know, being in the camps this year, seeing the preparation and the hard work that, you know, the staff and the players put in each day, um, you know, it was, it was awesome to see them come out with that, with that win. Cause I know how hard everybody's been preparing the past, you know, six, seven months. So, um, I mean, obviously I think, you know, world cup next year, there's, 
uh, like always, there's there's room for improvement. But obviously, coming out with with that win, it shows the hard work and preparation that was put into that tournament. As someone who has been in and out of the camps and in and out of the team, um, it, you've had a chance to really solidify yourself at Racing Louisville in, in the role that you can do and grow into this professional game. Um, when you look at the the national team level, is that something that's uh, part of your goals for this year? And even you mentioned the World Cup coming in 2023. And of what are your personal goals that you're setting or, or fighting for when you look at the next year of soccer? Yeah, it's definitely a goal of mine and, you know, it's, it's always been a goal of mine to be Olympics World Cup and to be, you know, a mainstay on that team. So um, getting the opportunities I did this year was great. And, you know, learning from a lot of, you know, the legends that are there right now, it's been amazing and being in that environment and learning. But, you know, I, I am uh, I'm ready to step in and help make a difference. And uh, like you said, you know, hopefully um, – in this next year being the camps and then your goal is always world cup. So I'm a, I'm excited. And um, yeah, I think this league and, you know, the new environment is also helping me prepare to do that. Let's chat a little bit about uh, the women's cup because we're going from an international month where there were a ton of competitions at that level, but there's also going to be a, a handful of like domestic club competitions as well. And Racing Louisville are hosting the second now annual Women's Cup. It's going to be taking place August 14th through the 20th. And uh, if you're listening, you can watch all the matches on Paramount Plus. Uh, but not only is Racing Louisville the host in this one, but defending champions, uh, defending title holders of the Women's Cup. So chat with us a little bit about uh you know how you felt sort of watching the news kind of roll out with the teams that were going to sort of enter the fray and you know potentially these other clubs that you're going to be going up against during uh the women's cup yeah i mean <clears throat> i think it's it's super exciting just because you know uh middle of the season and it's been a grind and i think something different switching it up and playing these these world class teams it'll be awesome but um, more so, I just think it, it's really good for women's football, um, you know, bringing in these these teams from around the world and um, playing at, uh, amazing facilities and having everybody watch here in America. I think it helps grow the game. And I think that's super important. And everybody gets to see um, players and teams from different countries that they may not watch and see different levels and styles of play. And so I think it helps grow the women's game. And so that's what I'm very excited about. And um, that's what I, I look forward to to seeing is just um, everybody tuning in and, and watching people from, you know, different places and around the world and how we compete against them. Yeah, I'm excited to watch it all. There's OL Reign is the other NWSL team in it. AC Milan, Tokyo Verde, Tottenham Hotspur, and Club America. And the way that this the Women's Cup is shaking out, it's expanded format this year. So there are six teams in it. And for Racing Louisville, you guys get a bye the first round, and you go straight to the semifinal, where you will either play AC Milan or Tokyo Verde. So either playing a Japanese side or the Italian side. When you look at the styles of play that you're potentially going up against, um, what do you think about it? Which one excites you between the Italian style and, and the Japanese style? Yeah, they're, they're just so different. I mean, they, they both have, uh, you know, strengths that are, are just so different. Um, and honestly, you know, like we said, like playing up in the youth teams, like I've played Italy and I, I've played Japan and I mean, both are not easy games. Um, uh, you know, the, the Italian teams are super physical, um, you know, they keep the ball, but they can go direct. Um, the uh, teams in Japan are just so technical um, and their spacing and their timing and the movement um, are, is just amazing. And it's fun to watch, honestly. So I think either way, it's honestly just going to be fun playing different styles, no matter what team we play. Um, but I, I love watching both styles. And um, like I said, like it, it's cool to learn from both teams playing against them. So it'll be interesting. I have a follow up on, on all the clubs that are going to be participating. We've been sort of floating this question around to to some of the interviews that we've been having around the Women's Cup specifically. But because of the expanded format this year, that includes teams going from four participating teams to six. It's also including the, um, you know, expanded matches. So there's like that quarterfinal round, semifinal round. 
cup final round, but there's also opportunities for teams to play for third, fourth, fifth, sixth place. So there's going to be a lot of games going on. And we've been asking um, players who are going to be participating in this uh, with, uh, with in between some of the matches or the kickoff times, is, is there going to be an opportunity to maybe watch maybe some of the other teams and other games is, and uh, if so, is there a particular team that you would uh, like in, in a match that you would like to watch? Man, well, I hope we can go and watch the teams. Uh, I haven't, yeah. you know, nobody said that, but I really hope so because I, I, that's what I'm very excited about. You, um, you can use it as an opportunity to scout. That's yeah, right. yeah, Tell yeah. Coach yeah. We'll that. Grin, you're scouting. There you go. <laughs> exactly, but yeah, I mean, I, I think we'll be able to go and watch. It's like you know, two minutes from players' houses, so. Um, hopefully we'll be able to go to every game, but, um, you know, like I said, I, I love the way teams in Japan play and, um, the Japan national team, like I've always admired their technical ability. And like I said, like their spacing, the way they play off of each other, um, how they see the game. So I'm really excited to watch them play. Um, I've always been huge fan. You know, when we're toward the, the, closing of our episode here but to, to sort of close out you know we like to have some some fun and maybe more lighthearted questions and I'm going to like stick with the women's cup for a little bit because another thing that we've been <laughs> pitching to to players who are going to perhaps be participating in this tournament for the first time or playing in the United States for the first time is the potential to maybe take in the the sight scenes and sounds of Louisville Kentucky so listen you're you're in the middle of your rookie year you've had a little bit of time to adjust and adapt what is a thing that you would recommend for some of uh the other players who are coming in Louisville that they should maybe uh, check off on their box if they've got some time to spare um you know well I mean the bourbon trail, I think, is what we're most known for. But <laughs> since we're playing soft, probably not for most of those players. But no, I think uh, save that for I, the celebrations, I guess. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Maybe I'll recommend it for that. But <laughs> um, no, I mean, I think uh, you know, Louisville is is a smaller city, but uh, it has a lot of culture, and I think it's super cool. I mean, the food is amazing here, so I would encourage anybody coming to try the different food and restaurants here because there's a lot of local and um kind of smaller t farm to table places that are, are very good so i would say explore that for sure okay so food first booze later yeah take yeah, notes, yeah. <laughs> take notes from from jalen howell i uh, i love it i appreciate it so much jalen howell thank you so much for joining us here today and attacking third. We always like to thank our listeners. So thanks everybody for tuning on in. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok at attacking third for more. Uh, we're on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, anywhere you listen to your shows. And a reminder that you can enter your name to win a hundred dollar Paramount Plus gift card. And you can watch uh, Jalen Howell and Racing Louisville in the Women's Cup on Paramount Plus. So to enter, subscribe to attacking third on YouTube, like this video and leave a comment with your social media handle. You can do all those things and you'll be entered to them. For Sandra Herrera, Lisa Roman, and Galen Howell, this was a second third.